All right, welcome back, everybody. This is Peter Renna, back with another edition of Dollar Bin Digging, which I do over at comicbookinvest.com. So please check out the article there where I'm giving you all the numbers and the recent sales data that I'm not throwing into the video. So you can check it out definitely there over on uh, the website, please. Please do uh, hit it up in the comments. If you have any suggestions, let me know what I missed, what you, what else you'd like to see, and if there's any topics that you'd like me to cover. But for now, enjoy this little video that I'm doing on uh, Tales from the Flip Side, as well as on my personal channel, where if you stick around, you can get a little uh, after credit scene to uh, get a couple of honorable mentions uh, yeah, if you're interested in that too. But uh, in the last few weeks, I've been covering the uh, Disney Plus Marvel shows. Uh, I've done three of them so far. So this week, I'm going to take a little bit of a pause and shift gears slightly. So uh, stick around and uh, check out what we got coming up next. All right, like I said, I uh, we're shifting a little bit, but not completely. We're still sticking with Marvel, and we're sticking with the uh, MCU, but we're moving away from the Disney Plus shows, because round about the time uh, Loki's coming out, we'll also should be having uh, Black Widow at uh, at that point, finally. Uh, this upcoming May, we should be finally getting that uh, Black Widow movie that we should have gotten last May, but, you know, due to the virus, uh, things got moved. You know, plans changed. So, a lot of the spec on Black Widow has been done and overdone, and it's not easy to find books that uh, you can find for cheap anymore. I mean, that, again, this movie was supposed to come out over a year ago. Uh, well, maybe a year ago, basically, at this point. But uh, here we are. So, yeah, I still got a few things you should keep an eye out for. But also remind you of the things you shouldn't have forgotten about either. So, sticking with Black Widow, you want to look at what characters are we getting in this movie. I mean, outside of Natasha Romanoff. Again, that's a book you're not going to get uh, for a dollar. So you're not getting that Tales of Suspense for, you know, Natasha for, you know, a dollar. So put that right out of your mind. Now, even with that, you're still probably not getting Yelena Belova either uh, for a dollar anymore. There was a time where you could find that in Humans 5 for a dollar, but those days are, are pretty much long gone. You might look into it. So I'm not saying don't look for it. Just, you know, don't go in there with the expectation you're going to find that uh, in your everyday dollar bin because uh, by now most you know pickers have dug that that one out. But that is uh, her first appearance, and you can see you know it's not just like a one page cameo or anything. She's got a, a few pages and a few panels. She's uh, into the story here, and uh, you know it's a uh, Elena Belova's a uh, Black Widow. There you can see she's got the little logo there on her belt. Uh, so it is what it is. There's her first. But another book that's uh, picked up, and again, you're still not going to be able to find very easily, but still, keep your eyes open, is uh, The Black Widow, you know, number one from Marvel Knights. Uh, this one ties in Natasha and Yelena together. So you can see there, the number, issue one has two covers. Uh, the second cover that has Yelena Belova on it is the one that is in much more demand because it is variant and uh, harder to find. And since she's the character that will be carrying on the mantle of Black Widow, following this movie, it makes a lot of sense for uh, people to want that one at this point. Because again, it's not Natasha's first uh, you know, first rodeo. She's, she's been around a while at this point. So this is still an early appearance for Yelena Belova. So that is uh, another reason for uh, that higher demand for this cover. But it's still something to keep an eye out for. Not that I expect a lot of people to find that in dollar bins. Not to say that it can't happen, but just keep your eyes open for it, I suppose. But the thing you still probably can find and a lot of people ignore is uh, Yelena's first solo miniseries for herself, which is that uh, Pale Little Spider by uh, Greg Ruka and uh, Igor Corday. Cordre. I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but, you know, got Greg Horn covers on these. It's a three-issue miniseries. I still find these, you know, for a buck and still grab them. They're still relatively cheap, but, yeah, it's something you might want to look into, because if she's going to be Black Widow going forward, you know, who knows what stories they're going to want to tell following this, you know, this movie. Maybe she gets a Disney Plus series of her own. I don't know. Maybe she carries on with another movie and there's a sequel. Who knows? And who knows what story, you know, they're going to mine for uh, for that extra extra content. But, again, you can see the Greg Horn covers here. I I like a lot of Greg Horn's covers, but not all of them. I mean, just some of the inconsistency, I guess, with the referencing. Because if you look at issues one and two, like the face reference, don't they don't look like the same person. So that's just a complaint of mine. Like this second issue, it looks like Rosie Perez a little bit to me. I don't know why, but it does. 
And then, uh, yeah, issue three, which is the last of the series. And you don't even get to see your face, so we can't uh, do a third comparison. But it is what it is. But that's still a series. And, a, you know, issue one, two, and three, you can usually find those still for a buck. They're still pretty cheap. Uh, so, you know, take a chance. Who knows? It's not going to hurt you. And it's just, you know, a nice little mini series that delves into, you know, a little story for her. So ain't, it ain't worth, a, you know, just it ain't worth the regret of leaving it behind and then something happening later. later. So just pick it up for a dollar if you come across it. So that will be my first pick, which will move us on to number two, and let's look at the Red Guardian. Now, I actually did find a first Red Guardian for a dollar in a bin, and that was the Avengers 43. Now, before I start you know, taking my bows, I will say the copy that I found was beat to hell. It was chewed up, water damaged, and wrecked, but I still bought it because you know, for a dollar, why not? So I got a wrecked copy of that book, but I got it for a buck. Nothing wrong with a, a wreck copy, as long as it doesn't infect your other books with, like, mold or mildew or anything like that. So, you know, just keep your eye on things, but still keep your eye out for it. So, with Red Guardian, first appearing Avengers 43, we got to move past that and think about where, where else can we look for Red Guardian books? Yeah, for a dollar and cheaper. Because, again, the spec has been been run through on this. Like, we're well, you know, months and months past when this movie should have even been released, so... Got to dig a little bit more. So even this book heated up a bit with the first Ursa Major because there's speculation that that uh, big bear is in this prison look looking area in the uh, trailer. And it's possible that and Ursa Major is there and we'll see that. But it, it would be a fun character for them to bring in. But I'm also looking at the broader group of the Soviet super soldiers here, which at one time did, you know, include Natasha. And this is the lineup that kind of changed a little bit as well as their name changed. So these Soviet super soldiers, you know, they first appeared in that Hulk book, uh, 258, with the, the Ursa Major. But uh, outside of that, they're also known as the Winter Guard, you know, at a later date, too. And it's the Soviet super soldiers, basically. And uh, one book that you still could probably find for a buck is this uh, one shot that they had as the Soviet super soldiers. Ah, getting tongue-tied here with the alliteration. Soviet super soldiers. That's like a 90s kind of style book. It looks like a Paco Medina cover, which is kind of cool. And I think this, again, was the only issue. So it's just something you can find for a dollar. Yeah, who knows? Why not, right? Now, with our third pick, I think everybody's pretty much nailed down uh, Rachel Weiss's role as being Iron Maiden in this, even though there was some speculation she, she could be the Taskmaster because you can't really tell. I, I don't know. But still, going with the idea, because we don't know anything for certain because we haven't seen the movie yet, even though you know it's supposed to have been released. If she is the Iron Maiden, Everybody's already found, you know, her first appearance in that Marvel fanfare, number 11. So keep an eye out for it again, but chances are that one's been picked out because those Marvel fanfares, I flip past them all the time, and you flip through, flip through, and you look, and that 11 is usually gone, as is issue 12, but sometimes people do leave that 12 behind. So while issue 11 is her first appearance, it's you know, not that big of an appearance. You can see there's a panel here where she's with this you know crew of villains, basically, and uh, you, know, you just kind of call out that there's you know Iron Maiden, a former Russian agent. It's just like that one panel, and then there's a panel at the end. Like, that's really it. So it's more of a cameo. So it's really in issue number 11, that I'm sorry, 11, issue 12, where you do actually get her on the cover as well, that that's more of a, I guess, I don't want to say full, but you know, it's another appearance. So that's one you still might be able to find. Because while everybody's chasing 11, sometimes they leave behind 12 because uh, that's the nature of uh, our our hobby. Sometimes that people just want the key and uh, they don't look for uh, any books around it. They don't care about the entire story or anything like that. They just want the one book that people seem to want so they can flip it and uh, go do something else, I guess, with that money. But keep an eye out for the 12 because, again, you get that first cover and a bit more of the story. So it's one you still might be able to find in, in the dollar bins for uh, for Iron Maiden. Because outside of that, she's bounced around as a villain here or there in Captain America and I think some of the other uh, teams down the line. But uh, uh, that's one I think is uh, worth checking out. <clears throat> and for our last one, we're going to roll on to the big bad. Well, maybe not the big bad, but the villain of, uh, of the film, Taskmaster. Or maybe I should say one of the villains. We just still don't know what the story is. So Taskmaster. Awesome look. Even you know throughout the histories, everybody loves the look of Taskmaster. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but you know that skull look, cool cape, shield sword. It's a uh, it's got a you know got an iconic vibe to it. So people people have always loved uh, Taskmaster in one form or another. So 
again, you're not going to find that first in 195, which you know, is the first because if depending on how you want to look at it, this is that Hulk 180, you know, Amazing Spider-Man 299 situation where you get that you know big reveal on the last splash page. That's obviously the character. Yeah, names there, costume complete. It's right there for you. So, but nobody likes 195. Everybody likes 196, which I can I get it. It's got a great cover. That green pops. He's on the cover. It makes for a better first appearance, but he was in the issue before. So 196 is the book that everybody wants for Taskmaster. And again, this is not something you're finding for a dollar. I'm not saying you're going to. I just want to point it out. That is the first appearance of Taskmaster. So you're not going to find that in your dollar bin. So what else, apart from the first appearance, what else can you look for? You're going to look for covers. You're going to look for you know key moments in the character's history, important changes possibly in costume, or, you know, anything that else that might you know ring for that character to, to drive people to look for it. So people have turned to this ultimate version of uh, Taskmaster, which appeared, you know, in Ultimate Sp you know, Spider-Man 26, uh, because they think, well, you know, based on the actor that they hired, he kind of looks a bit like this character. And it just, you know, because he's skin tone, so it's got to be him, right? I get it. I see the, I see the connection, but... Does that mean it's going to be that Taskmaster? Does it even matter if it's that Taskmaster? Because they're basically playing the same character. So what's the difference of whether it's the ultimate one or the regular one? But again, keep your eye out for it. I found a few over the years or the last year or two, but by now they're probably you know pretty much dried up because, again, this movie was supposed to have been released. So play that card if you want. They're still relatively cheap. They spike for a little bit, and they've kind of come back down because I think People don't really care about the ultimate version as much as they did once. So I'm going with this pretty awesome Joe Mad cover on this Taskmaster miniseries, just as a cover pick, like alone. Like I picked a couple of Taskmaster covers over my run doing dollar bin digging, and uh, there are a couple cool ones that you still find on the cheap. And this is one that I think you still can, and I think it's worth grabbing because I'm a I'm a Joe Mad fan. Uh, this is an earlier work by him, so it's a little rougher than uh, some of his later stuff, but. I still kind of dig it. Uh, got a cool look to it. Got a lot of motion. I, I don't know. I'm into it. The entire miniseries isn't bad uh, cover wise. I think uh, Udon or Udon. I don't know if I'm saying that properly. Did one through three, and then Joe Matarera, if I'm saying that right, did number four. I'm sorry. I butcher names all the time. I just go with how I read it in my head. But that's what I picked for uh, Taskmaster here for uh, my last pick. So hopefully you you enjoy that. These are some books that you can keep an eye out for. Uh, I'm gonna keep rolling with this with this Disney Plus idea and probably either do uh, Hawkeye or What If next. I don't know. I haven't decided yet because I think they're both coming later in the year. Uh, I think What If's next. So I don't know if I'm gonna do this chronologically or not. But I'm just gonna keep rolling with this idea because I'm not being I'm not able to hit a lot of dollar bins uh, these days. But uh, you know, what are you, what are you gonna do? It's winter time and. Uh, there's a lot less uh, options for me to go out digging. Uh, so with that, please like, subscribe, make suggestions. Let me know what you like about this, what you don't like about it, what you would else you would like to see. And uh, hope to see you guys yeah, next time.